you're not a CareSource member, this is your chance to choose CareSource. Over a million Ohio Medicaid members can't be wrong. It's your Medicaid, it's your choice. So choose the plan Ohioans trust, CareSource. Enroll now at CareSource.com. We also find out here that German janitor is a crazy hair collector. So that is check. Go ahead and add <laughs> yep. some points. Got one. Got one. Oh, and he also pulls a glove on in this scene. A, uh, a rubber glove on this snaps scene. Snaps it right mm-hmm. on. Yep. No, I'll do another one too. I'll put another one down. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff is actually wacky family comedy and porn at the same time. I'm realizing <laughs> yeah. that that crossover is too much. Yeah, James There's Bader. too much that works both for both. Both those things. He's absolutely both those things. It's James yeah. Bader. It's the perfect, <laughs> he's the center of that Venn diagram. <laughs> Oh, movie, movie, movie. Movie. Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright. Eli won't be able to join us after sitting on his balls and tearing them off. Classic Eli. <laughs> and Noah is getting a well deserved break. But get excited. Because I'm joined by two GAM All-Stars, two of my favorite people of all time, Cecil and Marsh. Gentlemen, welcome back. Hey, hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, always good to be here. I mean, I I would have preferred not to have to rush in at the last second, given the circumstances that were happening. But, you know, glad that Noah is doing so much better uh, now. So happy to step in in the emergency. (laughs) Many thanks. All right. Let's just get right into it. Cecil, what are we going to be breaking down today? Well, today we're going to be talking about direct-to-video favorite Quigley. (laughs) Not to be confused with Quigley Down Under. It's Quigley, and uh, it's the story of Gary Busey playing a dog in a movie. And they chose the dog for most of the scenes because it delivered its lines better than he did. So much better. (laughs) Yeah. This dog stole the movie. Oh, yeah. All of my notes, you'll see all the way through. I'm like, oh. going to love it. He's going to be so delighted by all of this. Most of my notes are like, squee! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The best. And Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved It's a Wonderful Life, but you really wish the Jimmy Stewart role was played by a coked up orangutan in a BDSM collar and a Boris Johnson wig, you will love this movie. He did remind me of Boris Johnson. Oh, right? Perfect description of Gary Busey. Yeah. He's amazing in it too. Not as good as the dog though. All right. No. Is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I think I'm going to go with set design. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Especially in like the office sections. It feels Mm. like, it feels like pirates raided a pier one and took what they could carry. (laughs) Like that's genuinely what it looks like. It looks like, it looked like the fucking British museum. It's like they stole everything and they just put it in one room and they won't let anybody see it anymore. That's what it looked like. Gary Busey's desk is nonsense. His whole office. (laughs) We're going to, I'm sure that's what you're talking about mostly. We'll get to that. Absolutely. We we will get Ramsey's the second in the background. Yeah. (laughs) There is an amazing piece of IMDb trivia that we will get to when we get there. Cause I can't wait. I can't wait. Beautiful. All right. I was going to go with best worst mystery genre for the movie. (laughs) So, okay. Fun game as we go along. Is this movie a wacky family comedy or very niche fetish porn? The latter. Or or both. (laughs) It's the latter. We'll try to figure it out. (laughs) No, it's the latter. (laughs) That was absolutely, yeah, I'm I'm the same. My best worst absolutely was the uh, best worst flimsy excuse for puppy play kink porn. (laughs) All (laughs) the way through. It's pretty clear that Gary Busey really wanted to be wearing that dog collar and being on his knees and being led down the street on a leash, but he didn't have a legitimate reason to do so (laughs) up until now. (laughs) I love it. Both of you, your notes are mostly like, it's, it's, it's porn. It's fetish porn. It's fetish porn. It's, it's, it's fetish porn. <laughs> There's it's so many decided. points in the movie where you look, you look at, you're like, come on, man. You This isn't even barely disguised anymore. No. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Yeah, completely. It, it, it became so overt. <laughs> the director, William something something, very clearly people were like, all right, man, come on. And he just kept leaning, leaning and leaning. But Gary Busey <laughs> loved it, so they were He's the star. Yeah, it was very much the, the Tarantino's feet. The uh, the equivalent exactly. was very much the public. Yeah. Exactly. There was a dog yeah. paw in somebody's mouth and they were pouring wine down it. Yeah. Like it's 100%. <laughs> Gary Busey is Uma Thurman's feet. That's what I always say. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about 
Quigley. Gary, come on in. Gary Busey, it is an honor to shake your hand. Hey, guy. Oh, hey. Oh, and you're doing like, um, like you're slapping me five or? Hey. Like, oh, like a low five. You're slapping me. Hey. Like, oh, and again, hey. and again, and again. Okay, hey. cool. Yep. Got it. Okay. So like, we're, we're really excited about the project. Uh, we're thinking lots of comedy hijinks, uh, you know, with the dog stuff. Yeah. And a Christian message at the end. What? Under your couch. What? Well, sorry? What is that? It, it's it's what, all the way what's under. What's he doing? Um, you know what? I don't think he knows that we're like in a meeting right now or that we're even doing a movie, right? Is that a ball? Yeah, but like he's also kind of doing the movie right now, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a ball. He it's is. a ball. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. I mean, we could we could just film him doing his regular life and, and not pay him. Huh. Can't reach it. So close. Okay. So so Whoa. I guess we just like grab some lunch and come back with cameras. Yeah, it seems like he's going to be there for a while. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, buddy, we'll be right back. All right. Where are we going? Where? where? Lunch. Nice. All right. You guys ready to do the ads? I thought Eli wrote the ads. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. No, well, no, he just says he writes all the ads. So, so he didn't write this one. No, no he actually did write, write this one. I just, I just want to clarify. He, it's most of them. Wait, wait, why, why do you write the ads when he's not on the show this week? Yeah, that's weird, man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He just said it's really important that I write the ads. Go ahead and do them. So um, you guys got the script? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right here. All right. We are rolling. Hey, Cecil, what you think about? <laughs> that yeah, that's, uh, that's what happens when Eli writes things. <laughs> uh, we're still rolling. He's probably saying what you're thinking, thinking about. about? I okay. think he's saying think, thinking. I wasn't about? sure whether the gag, whether there was a gag about? in here where he was like sure. deliberately doing it, and I had to yeah. kind of just read it as it was. Okay, I'm going to say what you're thinking about. Okay, it's fine. sounds good. Okay. Oh, hey Cecil, uh, what are you thinking about? Oh, hey Marsh, I was just missing my best friend. Seriously, Heath, I didn't come have on, time man. to write a new ad. He just popped it in the last second. <sighs> I was just missing my best friend, Eli. I feel so. Empty without him. Did somebody say empty? Sounds like you need Hello Fresh. What's Hello Fresh? Wow, didn't even give you the point. I know, I know it's ridiculous. No. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Number one, the way that Eli was the only one to come to QED this year and that therefore is our favorite. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, rough. really, really murdered really that one. Really yeah. rough. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marsh, number one. Like you said, the holidays are right around the corner and HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. That gives me more time to appreciate their artistic au of Eli's <laughs> podcast verse If only, Cecil. If only. <laughs> Hosting this holiday, HelloFresh Market has just what you need to please a crowd without the hassle. From photo-worthy charcuterie boards to mouth-watering desserts. Mouth-watering? More like Bosnikian? Like, <sighs> is, it, is it me or like, are most of my like, weirdly sexual? I, it's, it's not you. It's not you. Mm. But Heath, have you tried HelloFresh? I sure have. I love how the meals unpack in seconds and how I can stop and start deliveries on my schedule. That's why I, Heath Enright, the tall one, personally endorse HelloFresh. Oh, do you in the personal endorsement as well? Man. Really? So go to HelloFresh.com slash awful free and use the code awful free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash awful free with the code awful free. HelloFresh. I promise to never put season liberally over my friendship with Eli. He's scrumptious. And we're back. And we're going to start with a Casio keyboard playing emo pop preset number one. That's <laughs> fun. Yeah. Along with a really sad animated dog and some opening credits. <laughs> Yeah, this music, I had it down as that being extremely low percentage skater rock. It was uh, Blink 1.82. <laughs> uh, I will say these credits are the best video game I've ever played. The best <laughs> video game I've ever played. There's going to be video games in this movie. They're 
worse than this animated? <laughs> Not really. I wouldn't say it's animated, is it? No, no, it's it's a static image that you're slowly zooming in on, which is just as good as animation. It's a Ken Burns <laughs> PowerPoint that they did. They did the Ken Burns PowerPoint effect on every slide. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Light set it for it. I wouldn't be surprised if like one bounced onto the screen with a paper clip next to it. Stop that's what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's thinking outside of the box to be like, we don't have the money for animation. What if we just move the camera? <laughs> in a little bit. That moves it, sort of. Yeah. Also, the story that these images are uh, showing us, is this a dog like slowly taking the journey to go and drown itself in a river? Because it did yes. feel like that's what 100%. the dog was doing. The dog looked mad at the movie already. Like, the, <laughs> it's as if the dog was seeing the credits he was in and he's like, I'm getting played by fucking Gary Busey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's going to kill itself in protest. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right. So then they finally get the live action movie started. And it's Gary Busey pulling up to his office building in a Porsche. He is a, an evil rich guy. And his suit is, I don't know if anybody remembers this, I'm an old man, but Michael Jordan used to wear these really oversized suits so all the time. Big. And his yeah. suit is so big. He actually has trouble getting out of the Porsche because of the giant <laughs> suit. I feel like the wind caught him and he like tacked and jibed his way out. He finally made yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's, he's regretting borrowing his clothes from David Byrne of Talking Heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets out of the car. He looks over and there's a dog just proudly standing next to a giant shit dog just took. <laughs> And the dog's making hard eye contact yeah. with Busey. And Busey <laughs> is evil. So, of course, he hates dogs. And he tries to, like, go kill the dog at this moment. But he, like, sneaks up on it. Like, he's trying to sneak up on it. And he's kind of, like, got a bow-legged sort of sneak. And it feels like it needs that music, that dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But it's Gary Busey doing that. Like, <laughs> Gary Busey as a ninja. Like It's so funny. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so he tries to sneak up on the dog and then he slips and falls on the shit. Giant Pratt fall. Yeah. So fun for me. I was like, I love this movie now. <laughs> yeah. Really fast. Right. But he's running. He's running. He knows the dog's shit. He can see the dog's shit. That's why he's chasing the dog, I think. So like he's, he's got every opportunity in the world to avoid the dog shit. And yet he still stands in it, which feels <laughs> yeah. like a choice. That is the thing he wanted to be doing. It's the first hint. One yeah. of many choices. Yeah. Thank you, Marsh. Let's start the game right there. Yeah. That's one All right, point I'm going to put one fetish. tick. Yeah, one tick, tick for fetish. fetish. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Fetish. And in, if this would happen in real life, he's got a big streak of dog shit down the back of his suit from the way he lands. And I wanted the rest of the scenes to play out with that like very visible streak yeah. of turd down his back. I feel like he wanted that too. And they were like, no. <laughs> and there's no way this suit, the size of this suit doesn't cover the entire island that he landed on. So he 100% has his back in there. There should have been like a parachuting scene at some point that could have worked that in. <laughs> Hang gliding in yeah. the suit as he falls down. To, yeah. So, it's like Captain Planner. Or yeah. Something. Just to establish his evil character a little bit more, he's like, hey, my second in command guy. Also, uh, by the way, that's played by Curtis Armstrong, Booger from Booger <laughs> Presley yeah. from on the mean guitar. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yes. So he's the number two. And Busey's like, I want everybody who owns a dog in the company executed. Or. <laughs> Or at least says, fired for owning a dog. He 100% says kill all the people with a dog. And that feels like a deviation from the script on Busey's part, right? There's, there's no way that was originally in the script. He was meant to just say fired. And then he corrects himself to fired. And they're like, ah, fuck it, we'll keep it. Like oh, every sure. other take we've got of Gary, Gary Busey, this is the best we could get. You don't want to oh, see what we had to leave in the cutting room What for. a lovable scamp that Busey is. He wants to kill everybody. Isn't that adorable? Yeah. He has head trauma. He has a lot... <laughs> Yeah, he had a motorcycle accident in 1988 and just like smashed his head really bad. Yeah. That that happened in real life. Yeah. yeah. It feels genuinely like exploitative when you watch this. It feels like he's probably just working for the craft cart and they didn't tell him or something. Like it genuinely feels crazy. Okay, question. Does he know for sure that he's in a movie? Do we know <laughs> that he knows? It's not clear. I think to this day, Gary Busey still believes that for that period of time, he was a dog. He, he doesn't even know he wasn't a dog. <laughs> okay. That tracks with everything in the movie. That's the uh, working theory. So yeah, they go inside into the office and we get another thing with Gary Busey trying to do his lines. He, you get to watch him like visibly try really hard to say businessy, computery stuff here. Yeah, but yeah. 
it's very difficult for him. This is a 2003 movie, and he comes up with, I want to play my virtual reality CD-ROM for you, <laughs> as he's talking to Curtis Armstrong. <laughs> they do a walk and talk. Yeah. So that's going to be the MacGuffin sort of yes. of the movie, this yeah. interactive CD-ROM and Carta thing, whatever. It's It's nothing, but that's going to be sort of a big deal as an object. So they go into his office, and this is where we get the best worst set design Absolutely. Part one. His office is insane. Yeah, his office takes place somewhere in the near future uh, from the, <laughs> the from the decor. It, it's the set. So I've written in the notes here, set choice is insane. He, his office includes a very large shaving mirror on his desk. Yes. Two weird <laughs> twisted neck lamps with what look like the feet of birds. Yes, correct. <laughs> and then at least two eight foot tall statues of Egyptian, I think, servants. Sure. sure. And then a four foot tall golden coffee machine shaped like a shiny wide cock and balls. <laughs> And I wrote, there is no way this wasn't filmed in Gary Busey's actual office. 100%. This is, and this is where my IMDb thing came up. I went to the IMDb trivia, and according to uh, the DVD extras, Gary Busey helped decorate some of the sets. <laughs> I think I know which sets. Yes. Yes. That tracks yes. A hundred percent. He just went and got the Pyramid of Giza stuff from Pier <laughs> 1, brought it in. They just loaded it right on a truck for him. It's like, I mean, I, you're not kidding when you say... They're like nine foot tall statues in the middle of his office. It's crazy. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's like Gary Busey had to name evil desk stuff in like a lightning <laughs> round of like family feud or something. It's madness. He definitely did that. And it's definitely stuff from his real life. Yeah. yeah. So really quick, we get to see him hide his secret like GameCube disc CD-ROM thing of evil business, whatever. He hides it somewhere in the office. So now Busey gets back in his Porsche and he pops in. A burned CD, I'm assuming like a copy of the, that evil MacGuffin. And he's listening to his own speech about <laughs> making the company extra evil while he takes a vacation or something like that. Yeah, the, the Q3 financial report is his jam, apparently. Yeah. That's what he, he rocked out to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is like listening to your own podcast at full volume with the, like, the windows down. Like, it's so fucking cringe. It is so cringe. Just, yeah, just add like three shit. extra people to your listening figures. Like that, that guy I drove past, he listened to a bit. We can we can stick that on the analytics, tell the advertisers. I can, say, I can tell how fresh I got another one for him. Just yeah. bopping my head to god-awful movies. I look over at the light. I rev the engine in my 2000 <laughs> Subaru, it breaks down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure legally the only time that Gary Busey is allowed behind the wheel of a car is while <laughs> filming. There's no other time he's out. Like, yeah. He starts weaving all over the road yeah. in this scene. But like, we can't be sure that that was in the script or whether that was just Gary Busey. <laughs> Not clear. Actually, I'd say clear it was Gary Busey. If I had yeah, to it's, yeah, it's a closed course, 100%. Yeah. There's no one near him. Okay, but the swerve itself was pretty great. So a dog, a beautiful, adorable Pomeranian runs into the middle of the road and just sits down in like on the double yellow. Such a good dog. This actor yeah. dog. Amazing. And then Busey swerves to avoid the dog and he crashes. And I was just, again, very, very happy with everything that was happening. <laughs> the crash feels like somebody was standing behind another person who had a cardboard cut out of a door and then they kind of just moved it a little and ran to the ground. That's what it looked like to me. It 100% did not look like it was bad. It was very genuinely, like it's like, it's the PowerPoint of crashes, of car crashes is what it is. Yeah, they couldn't afford the car crash so they just had a picture that you just move slightly in front, in front of instead. Right. Yeah, the fake animation. The thing is, right, This even in the, the world of this film, this still makes no sense because the one thing, the one thing we've established about, well, two things we've established about Gary Busey's character is one, he's incredibly mean and ruthless and two, he hates dogs. So why would he even swerve to avoid hitting the dog given those are the only two character points you've given us? Like, yeah. This is such a badly written piece of filmmaking. <laughs> they already got it wrong. Yeah. The, the only way this is any more adorable is if the Pomeranian is like pushing an apple cart across the streets. You <laughs> see <laughs> <laughs> swerves. It's so fun. I, I can't deal with it. I'm, it's so cute throughout. Okay, That so, dog is so cute. So it's got a little <laughs> tiny face and oh, a giant amazing. mane around it. Such it's so adorable. Face. He face. We, we should not think about the fact that this film was made 20 years ago and that dog's no longer around. We shouldn't think of that throughout <laughs> the watching hey, of hey, this hey, film. Hey, 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 Morgan? Yes, he is still around. Change Marsh saying to yes, he is still around. <laughs> yes. he's, he's making a film at a farm upstate. It's Thank fine. You. Honestly, he's totally fine. There you go. Use that. Okay, so <laughs> apparently Busey died, also went to a farm upstate, and 
if they went straight to credits, it's like the greatest short film. <laughs> oh, <laughs> exactly. So yes. Excited. Right. Oh, yeah. But sadly, no, the movie continues and we see four angels in robes and presumably Busey is in heaven or purgatory. Yeah. And there's a couch. So here's heaven's guys. I want to describe heaven's waiting room for you. <laughs> it is a plain room with a couch with a, like, it looks like a sheet thrown over it. So like, it, it's like when you go visit your buddy at the frat house and they're trying to cover the cum stains on the couch. So they throw like a nasty old sheet on top. Like that for heaven. And then someone was walking by and they accidentally tripped and dropped a cornucopia full of fake like fruit. And it's sitting on the ground. With like a couple of brands. I literally could not parse this scene. I don't know what is happening. Okay. It's so weird. Marsh looked up some trivia yeah. on this. It's amazing. It's, it's so great. Okay, good. I'm, I can't wait to hear this. So you, you're totally right about the couch. But I, I actually think on the couch thing, though, it's not that they put the, the, the cover over it so you don't see the stains on the couch. It, they put the cover on so you don't get the stains from Gary Busey. It's the <laughs> other way around. That, Absolutely. The cover is it protected so, of the couch. Okay, point but taken. Yeah, yeah. In the IMDb trivia, this absolutely gem, which I will have to quote in full, Gary Busey threw a fit on set because the set of heaven didn't look like the real heaven, which <laughs> Busey claims to have seen after almost dying in a motorcycle accident in 1988. His fit became a fist fight when another actor, who also claimed to have seen also the real heaven, <laughs> disagreed with Busey's description and had to shut down the filming for the day. And he was like, this is a fist fight. And they fought on set. I just saw heaven. No, I saw heaven. No, my heaven is different than your heaven. <laughs> but given that we know uh, Gary Busey also helped decorate the sets, it feels to me that what we saw on screen is after Gary Busey fixed it to the real heaven, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's added the cornucopia and the couch covered in a white blanket and presumably the four <laughs> ethnically diverse, very muffled, gossipy <laughs> angels who are judging all of him. Yep. Yeah, who are wearing table skirts. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah, his absolutely. vision. The exact wording of him describing all that, probably very problematic, but there you have it. <laughs> okay. So this heaven scene, can we put another tick and fetish at this point or no? Are we holding off? Ah. Uh, I'm willing. Wait, what specifically are you giving it the fetish tick for? For the cum, the cum couch? I mean, the whole thing. I mean, come on, the whole thing. The couch, the cum covered couch underneath the thing. And then you got the, <laughs> the people in sure. there. Okay, the cum okay. couch right. where they were like, we don't want Gary Busey touching our cum couch. It's a nice cum couch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> please, please don't let him ruin our yeah. casting couch. Yeah. yeah the, <laughs> and I'm sullied, sullying the good name of his Absolutely. casting couch. Giving, giving it a point for that. That's two. <laughs> okay, I'll put it on now. I'll put right, one down. Put it on the board. <laughs> All right, that's two. Okay. okay. So he's in heaven and the angels are going to like make a deal with him. And first they hoof the Pomeranian from that road into heaven. Yeah, yeah. To make yeah. their point. Did they kill that fucking dog? For this? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the canon of the movie? That's insane. No, it's it, I think it's, it's, it's yeah. in a farm somewhere. It's not dead. Okay, but they didn't even need to do that. All they're doing is like saying, okay, what we're going to do is send you back to earth as a dog to teach you a lesson because you're mostly, you know, you're, you're just an evil billionaire guy, but we're going to give you a shot. You're a dog now going back to earth and your name is Quigley. They could have just said that, but they had to kill a dog to just have it next to him and show it to him. And that's it. Right. But I think that's because this dog was also in heaven. So I wanted the angels to start like picking apart the dog's life as well. But truly, <laughs> was he a good boy? Was he? <laughs> okay. All dogs are good heaven, Marsh. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so th they decide, okay, we're poofing you back to earth. You're Quigley, the Pomeranian. And we're going to give you a guardian angel. His name's going to be Sweeney. And guardian angel Sweeney is going to oversee this whole thing. Sweeney's the only one who can see him as Gary Busey. Everybody else sees him as Quigley the Pomeranian. So, right. poof back to Earth. The, the thing is, I want to know what the other if the other side of that equation happened and if therefore the dog had to stay in heaven as Gary Busey. <laughs> and if, if anybody in heaven would even notice if that was true. <laughs> okay. That That's, dog is shitting on a lot more stuff than it usually uh, does. Okay, so this is weird. I love the idea of a purgatory where everybody gets one more shot as Gary Busey on Earth. I think oh that explains God. a lot about the universe in real reality. Okay, so he's poofed back to Earth and Sweeney's down there with him. And Sweeney says, okay, God and the angels gave you two assignments. Go to it. Did they? They didn't. 
No, they definitely didn't. They forgot to tell them what the assignments were. Did the movie just forget? Mm, yes, 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they were they so they were arguing while he's on the couch. And the whole time he's he's they're still arguing and he's telling him the outcome of an argument that's happening now. So I have no idea what was happening in that entire scene. Yeah. I like genuinely they they I feel like it was like all improv. I was expecting Michael Scott to kick the door open as a DEA agent. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little Michael Scott, absolutely. No idea. I don't think the movie catches up with this either. I think no, they're just like, we no, forgot, no. whatever. We'll yeah. have to write around it. So from there, we cut to, I'm going to say the best cut in all of cinematic history. <laughs> I'm watching Gary Busey being walked down the street on a leash with a spiked collar. Fetish movie. During That's my job. Check. Yeah. Add another two check. points. That This is oh, an all two. the way. This is uh, an all the way. Absolutely. And also, just to be clear, this movie's called Quigley. It has another name in different markets. And the other name of this movie is Daddy Dog Day. Yeah. <laughs> this yes. could not be clear. And Track. it made sense to me because I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> I think this movie's got like one name for when it was sold above the store counter in the rental <laughs> store. And a second name for the, exactly the same movie, but just sold under the yeah. counter in the same store. You had to walk through the beads in the back yeah. to get yeah, the second exactly. copy. Absolutely. If you don't get it from under, it kind of ruins it for you. You yeah. know, so like they, they have both the same. Yeah. It's also called An Angelic Tale, which fits for the under the counter too, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Is it yeah. Tate? Yeah. T-A-I-L. It's T-A-I-L. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Dog. Because yeah. wordplay. Sure. Uh, some good wordplay. Yeah. Absolutely. Also dog tail. Yeah. Also dog tail. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Gary Busey getting walked down the street and then as Quigley, but also as Gary Busey for a second, we see him getting like ear scritches from a random lady. That's another street. fetish check. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in. D sure. just add two yep. more points for that. What are I'll we at? I'll put two more. Now? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I mean, it is also a family comedy. Give him like a couple points for that. Like it's done that, but it's definitely fetish is winning for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Sweeney's like pinch his ears. He really loves it when you pinch his ears. And this girl is like a hundred percent into this dog, like wubba, wubba, wubba. <laughs> and, yeah. and I was, I would have loved it if they would have been able to do a split screen with somebody just rubbing Gary Busey's face in the mirror. Like that would have been amazing. Like that's, you're missing. I mean, this is supposed to be a comedy. Perfect. You're missing an amazing comedic opportunity oh. with somebody just fucking tweaking his cheeks and slapping his face in the middle of that fucking mirror. Instead, it's just, they're just rubbing a dog's face. So you yeah. have to pretend. I watch that all the time. That's like ASMR right there with yeah. Busey making noises. <laughs> yeah. Again, I, I am almost certain those scenes would have been filmed, but just would have been unusable for what Gary Busey was doing in them. Like what we get on screen is all the stuff that was usable from Gary Busey from this film show, film set for sure. Yeah, no, I think you're probably shoot. right. You're probably right. All right. So Sweeney gives him more instructions here. He's like, hey, don't forget, you got to complete your two tasks from the angels. And Busey seems to be like aware that the movie fucked up. He's like, I don't know what those are. I think you forgot to tell me in the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I'm a dog. How do you complete tasks? What are you talking about? So he's like, all right, good luck. Poof. And yeah. well, Quigley's on his own. But there is so much sexual tension between Gary Busey and Sweeney in this that I thought, <laughs> is the second task to come out? Is that what has to, <laughs> what has to be happening here? <laughs> well, so you've, lived in, you've, lived, you've been in denial for yourself for so long, but just, just be you, man. It's fine. People will love you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so then really quick, we cut to Quigley just scampering around in the office building, which is delightful to watch. It's it's pretty long, and I enjoyed this a lot. Point being, <laughs> Quigley somehow gets locked inside the custodial closet. He, like, runs in there, yeah. like, multiple times throughout the movie, but he, <laughs> he keeps running into a locked room. Yeah. So he's locked in there, and then we cut over to the office with Dexter. That's Curtis Armstrong, the number two, who's sort of now the number one taking over for Busey. So he needs to find Busey's prized virtual reality CD-ROM thing so that he can impress the stockholders at the meeting tomorrow. That's the plot of the movie now. And I don't know why th this movie definitely does not understand virtual reality. That's going to be clear that they have no idea what that actually means, or what's involved, which is like, this movie was made like 11 years after Lawnmower Man. Did Jeff I <laughs> die in vain? Did he die for nothing? <laughs> Also, like, why make a movie about something you don't know nothing about? Like, just make it about something. Make it about a different MacGuffin. Yeah. Clearly, they have no idea. And they couldn't even hire an animator to make, like, a cartoon for them. Nope. They have to do a fucking PowerPoint it's for amazing. the rest of the movie. And this is all just to smush their stupid Christian message in, in the form of Christian video games are awesome. <laughs> we'll get to it. But it's so sad why they had to do that. Oh, yeah. 
So then they tell us a little bit more about the backstory of Gary Busey. Apparently, he was a genius of computer games, and he invented, among other things, a triple joystick. And they make a big deal about that. Yeah. I'm going to put another check for fetish there. Thank you. Well, that's, what, that's exactly what I had. It was like, yeah, so you need three hands to control it. And then I wrote, wait, no, I'm assuming the third joystick goes in your hand. Yep. Withdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even stupid that because they say, oh, it was great because you had to keep putting one jo- joystick down to pick another joystick up to keep playing. And that's, that's what they say it was actually for, the third joystick. And then I wrote, okay, so now we know what console to get Nora as a get well soon present. So it's fine. We can, we can sort it. There's also like a weird sexual tension between him and his like assistant where she like at one point she looks at him and she's like, is there anything I can do? To help this, and I'm just like that is 100 percent like a porn. Like, come yeah. on, we, yeah. we I'm going to do another check. Can we bring that couch back in. It's gonna be <laughs> I'm going to do another check for fetish. There, I'm doing another one. <laughs> I don't know, but that's not. There's no fetish to that, really. It was like okay, think, all right. That's, I think I'll we give them a pass. That's just them being creepy about okay. this office yeah. relationship. There's a significant power dynamic thing going on there. He's literally the boss of the entire company, and she's an unnamed secretary. Yeah. I'm that, no, sure yeah, that's problematic. That's problematic. No, she's into it. And then there's another power dynamic because she's a full head taller than him. <laughs> so there's a whole different power dynamic going on there sexually. Yeah. Also, Curtis Ar- Armstrong pretending he's 35. I think he was 50 oh my when God, he was serious. He was 50 when he made this film. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they just like took him right off the set of Revenge of the Nerds and they didn't even shave him. They were like, no, man, just get right, just right here. Just this is you. <laughs> All right. So from that office, we're going to cut over to the supply room again. Quigley is inside. Uh, yeah. And now we're going to meet the janitor of the mm. building. The janitor is German, I think, which, which is funny because it's a different country. So <laughs> assume we're in that. This is an insane choice. I think what's happened here is the janitor actor was very clearly given the brief that he's a, he's a uh, janitor and he's foreign. But then he chose German. Like, I don't think there's a lot of like German language first janitorial staff knocking around the US. <laughs> like it was pretty clear he should have picked a different nationality, but yeah, has no idea. I think it's just he he felt he had a German accent in him. He doesn't, but he felt he like does it was not. <laughs> he, he takes some hard swings at it, but he does not. Yeah. And uh we also find out here that German janitor is a crazy hair collector. So that is Chuck. Go ahead and add <laughs> yep. some points. Got one. Going. Oh, and he also pulls a glove on in this scene. Oh, uh, a yeah, rubber does. glove on this Snaps scene. Snaps it right mm-hmm. on. Yep. No, I'll do another one too. I'll put another one down. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff is actually wacky family comedy and porn at the same time. I'm realizing <laughs> yeah. that that crossover is too much. Yeah, James Spader. There's too much that works both for both. those things. He's absolutely both those things. It's James yeah. Spader. It's the perfect, he's the center of that Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Quigley sneaks out of the janitor closet, like magically. I didn't see how yeah. he did it, but that, that's the end of the scene. The door was closed. That's unrealistic. Unrealistic movie. Yeah. <laughs> the, the movie unravels Stupid. right there. It Stupid. goes right through a door. So, so from there, we cut over to Sweeney, the guardian angel. He's outside the office building and Quigley is just running around doing shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> You're so happy about this. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I did write like he. Like, at one point, he starts like nodding and shaking his head and stuff, and I was like, he, I wrote my notes. Heath could not be, be more di- delighted than when the dog oh starts God. like nodding and shaking his head and responding to things. Yeah, if there was a video of me watching this movie, it's just me like head tilt, head tilt, head tilt, <laughs> looking at quickly. What's he doing? What's he doing? He's too small. So he's on the desk and he's digging around. He's sort of rooting around on the desk, right? This is the part when and then there's like baby shoes on the desk. Did you see this? I did not see the baby shoes. So Go ahead was, and add a point, man. Yeah, no, I, that's, <laughs> thank you. I, I just wanted to bring it up just in case. Okay. <laughs> so we see, we see apparently baby shoes, which makes this even worse. And then Quigley makes a mess around the office that he's in. He he's, in, in a, a he's in Dexter's case? office and he yeah. pees into Dexter's briefcase here. Too. One more check. Yes. Got it? And, and okay. the version of this film that you get from under the counter has Gary Busey doing that scene. <laughs> it's the same scene otherwise. It's exactly. just, it's not the dog. Yeah. I really enjoyed picturing Gary Busey the whole time. Like, just like Cecil's talking about, like split screen. They needed to do that. It yeah. makes the movie yeah. very enjoyable. So you can see the dog oh, 100%. and Busey doing the same thing. <laughs> so he's in the briefcase. And then we see the janitor kind of making the rounds of the building. Janitor goes into Dexter's office and he sees that like, oh, there's some kind of mess here. He wipes up the pee in the briefcase and then he puts the pee rag in his mouth. 
Is that four checks? That's a or lot five. of points. That's so <laughs> many checks. It is so many that checks. Goes That's like on that one. five points for family comedy, six for porn <laughs> fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I, I can't even pass what this was meant to, like, what what was meant to be going on here. Because even if he thinks he's just like mopping up some liquids that have spilled somewhere in his job as a janitor, he still wouldn't put it in his mouth. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I, it baffled me for so long. He's a hair collecting Nazi. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, yeah. And it's gonna smell of dog. The whole room is gonna smell of dog piss. He knows that's dog piss. <laughs> it couldn't possibly be anything else. I'm gonna add another check. For Thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That you've you've argued us into one more check, Mark. Solid. Good for you. Solid. Good for you. Also, can I just say, continuity-wise, in heaven, when he's a dog, he's got his whole suit on. Now he has his suit coat off. So, th- but the dog still has all its skin. So I don't believe this movie at all. Like a hundred percent, don't believe it. They should have messed with that more. With like, okay, Busey's wearing this when this when the poof happens or whatever, and it yeah. changes it. Or the dog's got yeah, little like uh, he could be in pajamas with like little or, booties or something. Yeah, a little adorable hat. Right, come on, a pomeranian in a little little flat cap. That'd be amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, the only thing they do is the spike collar. It was disappointing. Yeah. They could have done yeah. a lot more with that. Absolutely. And, and Busey brought that from home. That's and no, hundred percent. Just he showed up on set and they were like, okay, that works. Roll with it. It wasn't even about dogs at that yeah. point. Yeah. It's just Gary Busey <laughs> turned up in the collar. Like, they didn't okay, even put I'm it on the dog. Idea. It's only on Busey the whole time. All right. Yeah. I guess we make it about dogs now. <laughs> yeah. So from there, we cut to Dexter. He's in his office and he's yelling at the German janitor guy about all the paw prints and the mess. Is this movie trying to be racist towards Germans? Because the guy was like, I, can you be racist towards Germans? I don't even know. That's one of the ones we're allowed to still do, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. I just needed to, I just needed to run that up and just see if I could still be racist. I think they not. get, what, um, forever billion years being the butt of jokes? <laughs> Uh, maybe not race, but like nationality for sure. Yeah, sure, sure. You can do yeah, accent yeah. stuff, I think. I think you're allowed to do accent stuff as long as you don't take the accent stuff too far, which I, he... this this movie will literally do. Yeah, yeah. no, okay, okay. all right, that's fair. All right, yelling, that's fair. Yeah. Can I see yeah. your papers? Yeah, can I see your papers? So that, is, that is too far. That is too Where far. Where is your papers? Yes. <laughs> Listen, if a German person at any moment is like, oh, okay, are we, are we not done with those jokes? No, we're not done with those jokes, <laughs> asshole. No, we're not forever. Yeah. So, I mean, the Austrians get off pretty lightly, though, don't they? I All things considered. suppose they do. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Just throw a little shit that way. Sure. <laughs> so, point is, there's a mess. Dexter wants to arrest Quigley, and he yells for guards, and he yells for animal oh, control. God. He's all mad. And uh, then we get the janitor chasing Quigley for a while, and he's, oh my God, Quigley is such a good boy in this scene. <laughs> He does, yeah. he does the running around in a circle thing, the like really quick little circle. So good. Yeah, he's great. He's, oh. he, knows, he knows three tricks and they have to use those three tricks to pretend it's him trying to communicate. So you can do stand, he can do turn around, you can do bark, which to be fair is one <laughs> more trick than Gary Busey can do. So it is. the dog is still up. <laughs> circle. So good. Yeah, so a bunch of chasing. And then finally, Quigley runs into the arms of Sarah. I think she is Curtis Armstrong's Dexter's assistant number two there, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, she's going to like adopt Quigley. This movie's going to get fucking weird now. And I was <laughs> very excited. But they don't go anywhere with that. Weirder. Yeah. And then Quigley runs away again. Yeah. Well, then then she tries to like, at one point he comes up, he's like, what is that? And she like tries to hide the dog behind her back for a second. Right. And she's and like, she hides the dog's face. Like they're going to recognize the, the dog's by his face. It's like, is that a dog? <laughs> wait, wait. Is that the same dog? Let right. me see his face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put that dog in a lineup with other dogs. I need to pick them up. The Pomeranians doing their circles. (laughs) Give me the treat, mother. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's something in the lineup where it's like, turn to your left, but they just do like a full circle every time. (laughs) (laughs) The the, the tape measure behind them showing like 20 centimeters. (laughs) So cute. And then, okay, so I'm making that squeaky noise and then they ramp it up for me in the next cut. It's so good. From there, he does a bunch of shenanigans. Quigley does, does his circly thing. And then we cut to him pushing a chair <laughs> across the floor of the office. And it's fucking adorable. Entirely unaided by human hands. He was, Mark. <laughs> Except the one they forgot to crop out like from the side. Weird. They didn't even crop in to show that there was a, that to hide the fact there was a hand pulling the fucking chair. 
It's the steepest thing I've ever seen. Can I be a curmudgeon and ask why? Because he's not in the scene, the next scene okay. with the chair. So like, <laughs> why did they have him do it? Very so good I, I, question. Why? I worked this out, right? Oh, I did you? Because, oh, good. I yeah, mean, yeah. So like, this, this company makes video games. So I think he realized he needed to push something over a pressure pad on the floor to release the lock <laughs> on the door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then he stands on one and he spins around oh, and then the, exactly. the, the, the chain goes, I bit, okay, I you get it. smash <laughs> a ceramic pot, it breaks yeah. open, there's a key in there. Yeah, they said they missed so much. That would have been great. <laughs> but yeah, Gary Busey and the movie are very confused by like the concept of dog body is different than human body. So they're like, oh no, the dog would push the chair over next to the file cabinet and then... Well, okay, if the dog can't open a file cabinet. Can Busey do that? No, Busey can't do that either. Fuck. <laughs> so they just have to like cut past it. <laughs> and, and this is because like they're meant to have like spent the week. It's been a week since Gary Busey's meant to have died. And they're meant to have spent that week looking for the CD-ROM, virtual CD-ROM. Right. And so what we have here is the dog going to the drawer. And so oh, yeah, they did an extensive search of his, of his office and didn't look in the main drawer in his <laughs> office. Like, yeah. th that, that one never crossed my fucking mind. <laughs> But it's worse than that because the CD isn't in a drawer. It's nope. just on one of the pieces of furniture. Yeah, it's right just behind like on a piece some, of furniture. <laughs> yeah, it's under like some insane bird candelabra twisted around another bird candelabra, something like that. <laughs> so Quigley yeah, finds... You've got to order a macchiata from the, uh, yeah. the coffee machine and <laughs> right. it just plops out. <laughs> right, so <laughs> Quigley, I, obviously that's Gary Busey, so I guess he knows where it is, which is weird that he would look in the wrong place first. But he goes, he grabs the CD, brings it over the desk... But then he drops it out of his mouth and the CD fucking explodes and bursts into flames like a car <laughs> went off the side of the road. And this is why they stopped making those porcelain CDs that were all the yeah. way for a very short <laughs> space of time. They're just not robust enough. <laughs> it's a weird plot point. So Dexter sees the CD and then he sees it get broken. And then he gets a bold new plan. He is going to scrap whatever it was on that CD. He's going to go out on his own and he's going to have the company invent a multimedia player to impress the stockholders at the meeting. <laughs> yeah. It's 2003. What was on that CD was Gary Busey's plan to radically downsize the company and <laughs> sack a load of people, right? Yeah, and so like, right. all they had to do was destroy the CD and suddenly the business it no longer requires to uh, save costs quite so significantly. It was all the CD's fault that the business was failing. Yeah. Right. Then there's like this aggressive moment afterwards because you get the heartwarming sort of stockholder music while he's doing his thing. But then there's a moment afterwards where she's holding the dog and she's looking at him and then she's like aggressively telling him to pet it. Like she's like, pet him, go ahead. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? That's a dog. She's like, pet the fucking dog, motherfucker. Give and belly he, rubs to Gary Busey right the fuck it's now. Like, <laughs> it's like super aggressive. That's two fetish points. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was definitely their like romantic turn moment too, sort of, right? So like Dexter stares at Sarah for a second. He, he goes way too long because he's, He's a creepy guy. <laughs> and he's got a crush. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, but why don't you give belly rubs to Gary Busey? Like, come on. <laughs> so it was like wacky family comedy. And I'm pretty sure the beginning of an awkward threesome is what it felt like. <laughs> the physical blocking of this scene. She's like grabbing a paw and a hand and trying to get them all three together. <laughs> really, really weird. Okay, well, uh, the movie is about a... Love triangle, like a Shakespearean Midsummer Night's Dream love triangle between Dexter, Sarah, and Gary Busey in the body of a dog. <laughs> and I think we're all on board, but we also need yeah. a long break. And then we'll be back with more Quigley. For the last time, Aunt Edna, we're not coming to Shrewsbury. <sighs> hey, Marsh, what's the matter? Yeah, you hung up your giant old-timey hallway phone that I imagine you have instead of a cell phone. That's weird. Yeah, I do have the house. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, no, it's it's my aunt. You know, we were supposed to do pudding with her for Boxing Day, but she wants us to National Rail to Shrewsbury. And that's um, that's bad. From Liverpool? Madness. Cecil, do you have any idea what he's saying right now? I, I think he's talking about like Christmas, maybe? I'm not sure. I... Okay. Well, look, Marsh, this time of year can be a lot and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. But I thought therapy was just for people who voluntarily switched to O2. What? 
No idea what that is. But if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If only that were true of prime ministers, eh? They have a new one. Probably a new one. From when? Not clear. Probably have a new one. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash awful. All right, guys. Now, if you excuse me, I've got to go and completely change my seating arrangements for the Sunday roast for Crispins. Are we sure England is like on earth? Nope. No, we're not. Got it. Hey, God, you wanted to see me? Sweeney, yeah. Come on in. Uh, grab a seat. So um, there's a billionaire who owns a video game company and he's being pretty evil. I want to teach him a lesson. Okay, cool. You want me to kill him and send him down to Satan, right? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, he's, he's a job creator. That's real and very important to me. I'm going to kill him for like a second, but then send him back to Earth as a Pomeranian to help his brother financially. Okay, but why the dog component? Pomeranian. Yeah, got it. Got it. Why the Pomeranian component? I, I don't follow. Couldn't you just send him back as a human and have him give the brother some money? As... No. Why not? Because he, he can't just he just give the money. That doesn't make any sense. He has to go back as a poofy white Pomeranian. Oh, and he oddly has to, specific. As a poofy white Pomeranian, don't interrupt, named Quigglesworth, Lord of Quiggleberry Landing. And to get redemption, he has to make the brother succeed at work. Oh, okay. You mean like the brother's got to make his own way, like, like teach a man to fish? Exactly. Yes. Got it. Okay. So what kind of work does the brother do? He makes video games. Oh, come on. What? Listen, like big guy, like if I'm way off base here, please correct me. But uh-huh. if you want to fuck a guy in a Pomeranian suit, just fuck a guy in a Pomeranian suit. I want suit. to fuck a guy in a Pomeranian suit. <laughs> What's up? Hey, Gary. What's under your desk? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Gotta get my face closer. <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with Quigley. And of course, in my head, also Gary Busey, the real actor scampering through the yard outside the office and guardian angel Sweeney is here to basically just recap act one for Gary Busey, the actor, I think. <laughs> Get <him> back on board. <laughs> and if this next hour, cause there's an hour left of the film at this point, if his next hour was just Gary Busey, just enjoying his life as a dog, I think I'd still be here for it. I think it would make it my favorite <laughs> Absolutely. film. Absolutely. Yeah. You should just get him going. Dog's life. There you go. A lot of stuff there. We also get a uh, a skunk joke here because animal yeah. control shows up and has to deal with farting skunks. skunks. They're funny because they they smell bad and they fart, make that's, fart sounds. That's a, a point for each, <laughs> right? Point for fart each. <laughs> I really hope the skunk was just some of the mean billionaire having to atone for something. <laughs> 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 it's fucking Jeff Bezos or whatever. <laughs> They should have had so much uh, more of that. Y'all yeah. are writing a much better movie throughout. Every God. animal, every animal is another <laughs> fucking <billionaire>. possum for <laughs> Elon Musk or something. Like, yeah, with all his kids on his back, there's like a million kids and they're all on his back. <laughs> so Busey's talking to the guardian angel and he's explaining how like the dog's life is really hard for me. This sucks. And he says... <laughs> I think exact quote. I think I, I think I have no, this yeah, right. I think you got the mm-hmm. I'd have a better time cleaning a short person's <laughs> teeth. <laughs> what? Fucking what? Yeah. Is that a saying? I have no idea what that means. You got to keep Gary out of the writer's room. You just got to, you got to shoo him out. You know, you just got to shoo him away when he comes in. I think that's the key. Okay. Is that a flattish point, by the way? That could only have been an ad lib of Gary Busey just being let loose on microphone and they, and they just couldn't afford another take. Or it's just every other take he said something weirder. And so like, well, yeah. I guess we've got to go with the short person's teeth. Like, we just like, okay. We definitely can't use these other ones. Got to roll back to the first one. Okay. It's not yeah. out of the question that Gary Busey is like, brushing the teeth of different heighted people and being like, this fucking sucks when I have to bend them. Like, that's something that's happening in his life? Wouldn't surprise me. I also feel like a short person's teeth might be easier to clean than someone who's like really tall too. I mean, it just feels like it just operationally it'd be easier. Right, so sure. I don't even understand what I think it's easier about. to look up than down when, you, when you're using an implement. I think looking down <laughs> with an implement, I think the nose is going to get in the way and I think their upper lip is going to obscure some of the teeth. Whereas from, from below, I think you've got 
Like uh, you've got a decent angle to really, really get in there and see what's going on. And Marsh, if you don't slow down, I'm going to add another fetish point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, Gary Busey's personal teeth are like wall mural sized. So they like, like, they're maybe... like chiclets. They're fucking huge, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, point is he's talking to the uh, Sweeney guardian angel guy. And now he's completed one assignment. Not clear what that was because the movie forgot. Now that he's going to move on to the next assignment. This one we actually do learn about. He needs to help his brother named Woodward and the brother hates him. He's got to help Woodward like fix his life and financial situation. Right. And, he, and he's, he's saying he's trying to rush into it because Sweeney says, you know, what's the rush? And it's like, but you've got a point. Like if it's a case of do these assignments and then you'll get into heaven, why wouldn't you be in a rush? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. save her being a Pomeranian, you know, really, really take time to stop and piss on the roses, you know, really take it in. I spin. I Cold dog food. It's delicious. I uh, <laughs> I also, too, can we talk about Sweeney's costume changes for a second? They're yes. fucking How insane. How many fucking costume changes are in this movie? He'll be in a scene in this movie. And it's not now, but like later on, he will be in a scene. 10 seconds later, he will literally be in another costume. Yeah. I mean, he just walks off scene for half a second and he is in a brand new, it's like a fucking Broadway show. Okay. I feel yeah. like this actor was like, you're all doing fucking fetishes. I'm doing mine, which is I change clothes <laughs> all the time and you, you all deal with it. Yeah. I, I think he just found the dressing up box and was like, I want to, I've got to make my way through all of this and use, it, use every single thing in here. And he ends up being like Cher from the Turn Back Time tour. Like so many different <laughs> costume changes over the course of an hour. Maybe they wanted to do like, like a Scrooge thing where he was visited by a bunch of ghosts, but they couldn't afford different ghosts. So they just changed his costume each time. So <laughs> each time he's a different of, ghost, but he's like a hockey one jumpers, and like yeah. a, a guy with a, a, ho- a ghost in a vest <laughs> and then a ghost with like a, like an old timey, like turn of the century Parson <laughs> outfit on. <laughs> Does he have a safari outfit at one point? He does. He does no, have a safari point. outfit. Yes, he does. It's, I really think this was just this actor messing with the movie for sure. I think that's when he's trying to find the dog. Later, the dog goes missing. And he, I think he changes into a safari outfit to try and hunt down the dog. Oh, I'm just realizing. he was going on safari yeah. in some sense. I yeah. think so. Because that means like journey or something. Okay. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we, get, we get another Quigley running montage from there. It's great. But... He gets caught by animal control at the end. It's very sad. Goes to the pound. And the pound scene is amazing because they immediately start with the blues. So the music is all like, I'm down at the pound. <laughs> it's fucking pawn music. It's absolutely <laughs> pawn music. Yeah. We, we, okay, pan, another, we pan across I'll put another check puppies in, in cages. We pan across fucking Gary Busey, the puppy in a cage. Because this is I'll a low-key key king yeah, puppy play two. film. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's proof. He's yeah. in pound town. Absolutely. <laughs> Also, I did also think, I genuinely thought uh, as I was watching this, crazy billionaire money, we go back through every one of Gary Busey's past films and have him played by a dog. Like Under Siege, but a Pomeranian, <laughs> fucking incredible. Okay. That, uh, I, that's a whole bunch of movies I would so love to watch. <laughs> there you go. Some billionaire money. We make that happen. So <laughs> he's in the pound, they cut away, and then we get Guardian Angel Sweeney looking for Quigley. He doesn't know he's in the pound yet. And he's talking to God at this point. Sweeney's like, I'm not really allowed to help Gary Busey. You told me I couldn't do that, but he's still apologizing to God for not helping. It's kind of confusing. He does yeah. nine outfit changes to go with his fetish, which is fun. <laughs> he comes in dressed as an employee from Foot Locker. Yeah, absolutely. He does. He's wearing a referee outfit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He sees the dog catcher. He realizes, okay, yeah, Quigley's at the pound. So he goes to the pound. And yeah, he's dressed as a a referee, but the point is right here, we get to look at Gary Busey on all fours. Yes. Mm-hmm. In a shit smeared cage. Again, at my job, I did that today. Yeah. Wearing a dog collar. Yeah. Giving a whole new right. meaning to at the pound. Yeah. Absolutely. One more check. <laughs> One more check. Got it. Okay. So who do you who is this movie for? Like okay. <laughs> Gary Busey. It's just Gary it's for Busey. Yes. So many people. Okay. So there's yeah, it like was straight to video, but it was straight to his particular yeah. video player. <laughs> right. There's like three people in the world who love a hacky family comedy and puppy furry stuff and Gary Busey. And like one of those people's the writer director, obviously. And like And one of them's you, I think, Heath, because you're okay. Yeah, and the third, the yeah, third no, one's Gary Busey. Definitely. So we, we figured it out. That's yeah. who it's for. All right. So yeah, Sweeney is either camouflaged by his referee outfit or invisible. And animal control guy walks over to Quigley's cage 
And there's supposed to be like a break out of the cage moment here. That's sort of what happens. But the guy doesn't open Quigley's cage. So I was confused. Did he like phase through the wall again or something? I think he fucked up opening the cage. And so they just sort of like cut to the cage being open. Yeah, they cut to the cage being open. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. And then Sweeney whistles when the cage is somehow magically open and then Quigley runs out of the cage. So like... Right. So, so Gary Busey needed the signal to escape. <laughs> 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 the person had to be He cute. distracted him okay. in his referee <laughs> outfit, whistling from the corner. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what happened. <laughs> that's actually another fetish point, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... I think whistling from the corner is an entire category of poem. If you look it up... It's- <laughs> Well, I haven't yet, but I yeah. will later. Thank you, Marsh. Jerry Falwell Jr.'s into it, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so now Quigley's got to finish his second task, his second assignment from God. He's off on his own now. He's escaped. And I guess he walks to the brother's house to do that second assignment. And on the way, he sees his niece, Megan, we find out, and she's about to get hit by a truck, just like the Pomeranian <laughs> at the beginning. And Gary Busey as the dog, as Quigley, like tackles her out of the road and saves her life. Uh, and I really wanted the driver of that truck to have to be the dog next. It's like, oh God, it's just like, <laughs> just a series of guys becoming dogs one after another. <laughs> that one's got to be a bulldog though or something, right? It's, it's got to be yes. a different dog. Like, oh, it's a tr- What's a truck driving dog right now? Top of your head. 100% bulldog. Truck driving yeah. a bulldog. Nailed okay, it. all right, fair. No all question. Right. Okay. I was good. Rottweiler would work. I'd allow a yeah. Rottweiler. A, a bull mastiff, maybe. Something yeah. Big, like yeah. That. Fair. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they go inside and then we, we cut to a little bit later that night and Busey's brother, Woodward, comes home. He's all sad because he got his hours cut back today at work. Yeah. And that goes along with the assignment, which is to help him be financially successful or something like that. Right. The thing about his finance, his, his whole finances, right? He's a delivery driver by night. Because by day, he's a successful business consultant who helps people fix and run their businesses. Sure. <laughs> I don't think it's the hours as delivery driver that's going to get him out of this mess. I think he should really focus. Because he, he, he said like he helped a guy, like he got a job offer from a guy whose business he turned around and showed how to run. It's like, well, why is that guy in a position to offer you the job? You just <laughs> right. his entire business. <laughs> and then he's like, oh yeah, but the job would have been a cut to the money that I'm on. It's like, well, you, yeah. you need to charge better. You need to fix out your freelancing <laughs> rate, man. <laughs> Yeah. But he's a gifted video game programmer. Would we say programmer? Oh, right. That's his other, yeah. <laughs> his other uh, job. He has, job. He's, a, he's a gig video <laughs> video game programmer. <laughs> he does, you know, on some app somewhere. Right. So, but not yeah. the evil fucking atheist no, kind of video game. Absolutely not. He makes amazing Christian video games <laughs> that everybody yeah. loves. Or he would, but he, he's not spending enough time uh, working on it because he says there's just not enough time in the day. It's like, yeah, because you're working as a business consultant all day and then a nighttime <laughs> delivery driver. This is a ludicrous model. Yeah. Also, you know these video games suck because mom is like, yeah, he's making games for kids that parents would approve of. You're like, yeah, no, fucking 100% that game is the worst game you've ever played. There's sure no way that game is good. That's Bible. They man. accidentally show Fuck us the you. game. We see it. It's terrible. It's yeah. fucking rough. <laughs> Yeah. I wanted them to like, like, I thought maybe we'd get like a 2003 version of virtual reality Jesus at the crucifixion. Like that actually exists now, by the way. Some company made that shit. It's terrifying. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but like on a CD-ROM from 2003. No, it's, it's fucking four animals throwing a party and skipping stones. That's the fucking game. On a PowerPoint. No, yeah, while, while creepily yeah. saying your children's name in perfect fiction. <laughs> the, game, <laughs> the, fuck? the game is skipping stones. That's the video all, game. That's the entire game, man. So stupid. They also at this family, by the way, they have so much shit on like the counters and the tables. Like nobody, everybody was just like, no, nah, I think that, I think we need a little more shit on the counter. Is there any way you could put like two <laughs> loaves of bread and like a hundred <laughs> apples up there? That would maybe like like round out the scene for us. Use my cornucopia from the foot. No, Gary, it's too much. It's too much. Then it'll look like heaven there. That's yeah. dumb, right? I sorry. <laughs> yeah, obviously. They like dump the whole cornucopia on the table. Right. It's crazy. It's a lot. Yeah. So we see that because they cut to the next day. They're having breakfast together. And we see this ridiculous thing with like apples everywhere. And Quigley is reading about the financial markets in the newspaper. Quigley the dog. Yeah. 
And the dad is like, oh, I think he's reading the papers. Like, okay, but why the fuck would you think that? Because you think this is just a dog. You know? Thank you. There's no reason this dog would be reading the financial news. He's not reading about the stock market, for example. <laughs> That's excellent. That's the, the Dow Bones. Well, well. <laughs> so, so yeah, Woodward's an idiot because he was like, I, I'm pretty sure that dog's eyes are moving back and forth, probably reading about the stock market. And like, <laughs> He is not savable. This is an impossible task from God to make that guy he's successful. But they're going to try. They have breakfast. They say grace over breakfast. So this mm. movie full counts as Christian movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, 100%. And at no point do they mention the grace like, you know, thank you for helping me get over my brother's death so quickly. It's been one week since my brother died. I know yeah. They don't even know he's dead. Yeah. Right. Okay. No one's told him. The movie later on, they're like, they refer to him in the like present tense as if he still exists. They have no idea he's dead. Yeah, and they live like Pomeranian walking distance from each other. <laughs> they don't know. The it's not even died? like one great journey away. <laughs> right. So they, they eat breakfast together. I really wanted like one of the two kids to just like eat all 15 apples, hard eye contact <laughs> with the camera at the same time. Like one of them puts a couple in his mouth and he looks like Gary Busey with his teeth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that scene ends with. Gary Busey needing to take a shit in the yard. So his niece and nephew go outside to have him <laughs> take a shit in the yard. Then we get the kids playing this piece of shit Christian video <laughs> game about, again, literally stone skipping. Now, I love stone skipping, but I'm like an only child and we were poor. So I learned to do that. But this is not a video game. I'm 100% an analog stone skipper, though. I don't like the digital version at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they're all excited about it. And they're like, oh, let's, let's have Quigley play the video game. All right. Hands and fingers. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Which, oh, I, I wrote down, I really hope the brother takes inspiration and starts like pivoting to make video games for dogs. Please let that be oh, the direction this has yes. to go. It doesn't, but yes. it should have done. It absolutely should have. And what kind of shitty game doesn't have a third joystick? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, right. You need a third joystick for a good game. And I... It struck me as like, it's so weird that we were just done with that whole company plot now. We're like, that's all just done with now. And I realized, like, it's like this movie is heard there's meant to be like an A plot and a B plot, but they thought that meant sequentially. It's like, you have to do all of the A plot, finish that, <laughs> then the B plot. Right. It actually is like that. It's like act one, we ended our movie. Let's make two more movies called act two and act three. And they do their best. <laughs> this is also where we get mom and dad getting way too sexual like the actors by accident yeah. like almost uh -huh. fuck in front of their kids <laughs> in a christian movie and the, the director guy who clearly is a furry dog type of guy was like cut cut humans gross no yeah <laughs> i don't know man i'm gonna get another i'm putting a point down i'm sorry i gotta oh, add still, one to i'd this. still give him I'm a point, one. Still give I'm him a point. One. yeah fucking in front of your kids that's, that's one point <laughs> They also cut to like the kid in the room at a certain point. So they're showing the kids rooms and that kid has like a million Hawaiian punch posters. All what the like that kid that? loves fucking Hawaiian punch. <laughs> that shit is fucking amazing. What a weird detail. Okay. So this kid was like, I'm doing my fetish and it is the amazing juice drink <laughs> called Hawaiian punch assholes. And he's got like pin up posters of the character crazy. in a bikini on the, it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> the only excuse for that, those posts on that wall is if he's been like trying to tunnel out of his bedroom like in Shawshank. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would have been perfect. <laughs> so crazy Hawaiian punch moment. Okay. And now it's time for a montage of not finding an owner for the dog because he's <laughs> yeah, actually no, you your that. dead uncle. The music in this scene is so fucking bad, though, guys. I mean, like, it's super duper the worst music it's I've ever heard really in any rough. of these. I've seen a lot of Christian movies, and this is really pushing a limit, man, for yeah. real. <laughs> and this is the girl she's gone out to, like, check the, the, the wanted posters that she's put up to see if any of them have been taken down or anything. Right. And so, like, as she's gone around that, we see her, like, go into the creepy woods. It's like, yeah, kid, don't forget to check the sign that you put up in the middle of the fucking creepy woods. You wouldn't want to miss that. <laughs> What if someone who lives in the middle of the woods is actually the person who owns Quigley? Why would the sign go up there? Do you think yeah. maybe a troll owned the dog? <laughs> yeah. So she's in trouble now. She gets kind of lost. She's out in the fucking woods yeah. for no she reason. She walks three feet into the local woods and she's completely yeah, she's lost. Yeah, she's like, I'm lost inside. Yeah. And then yeah. Quigley magically knows that his niece is in trouble somehow. 
Yeah, he's doing the Lassie like someone's fallen down the well. But in Lassie, yeah. right. Lassie saw them fall down the well. That was the important <laughs> part. It wasn't like Lassie was a fucking psychic border collie. <laughs> Gary Busey's like, I'm off for psychic. Shut up. We're using that, yeah. So the family goes along with this dog somehow communicating, hey, I think your child is lost probably in the woods. Let's go find her. So they run out the door, jump into their SUV, and she decide to drive. It's a fucking tank. It's a fucking tank. It's such a big... They're meant to be down on, down on their luck, like financial yeah. trouble. They live in a big house in the middle of like a nice, pretty countryside location with plenty of land, and they drive a fucking tank. It's, yeah, yeah, it's an right. escalator or whatever. Yeah, and they got like a giant <laughs> escalator. Fucking, You're fucking, sell you fucking sell the escalator with the you wire got rims. cut. Yeah. She runs out too. When she runs out of the house, is the best. I have no idea why the, the, the actor did this, but the actor runs out of the house to go get in the car, and she like flips her hood up on her hoodie and like tightens it down around her <laughs> face like that little kid on fucking South Park. But then she takes it down when she stops driving. So that's like the driving hood. <laughs> it's such a wild decision. Very confusing. It's a choice. Yeah. Where are they going, by the way? They're just like driving somewhere out to find yeah, her? They're just, yeah. yeah. Just feverishly driving around in hopes that you see a kid who would walk two feet into a woods. Sure, I think is what why the doing. fuck not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She calls dad to be like, hey, I think Megan's missing because Quigley tilted his head or something. And he's like, call the cops. So she yeah. calls the cops. Which she has not done yet. Right. Yeah. And she calls the cops on her gigantic cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> her cell phone is like the size of a, it's like it has to sit in the passenger seat next to her. It's so big. And she picks it up and has to hold it with two hands to her face. It's the best. Like yeah, seeing old- cars that powerful to power yeah. that phone. <laughs> it's the That's only the way only she can cars. move around with the cell phone. Are we doing a point for that? I feel like uh, oversized I think so. cell phone. Yeah, big oversized <laughs> like cell phone. Thank you. Or something. Thank you. I think I have that nope, one. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Zach Morris thing. All right. Well, the family comedy thing ran out of plot, and it seems like they're going to do a pivot into Sound of Freedom. For the end of this. So I think we're going to need another quick break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will Quigley continue being adorable enough to make up for the rest of the movie? Who's a good boy? Is he spin move? Find out that yes, he spin move when we return for the Busey Tastic conclusion of Quigley. Hey, uh, William, can I talk to you for a second? Oh, yeah, sure. What's up? So I'm just looking over your script and there's a few moments I'm a little worried about. Oh, worried? Um, what do you mean? Yeah. So right here it says, Gary Busey gets belly rubs from random woman on street. Oh, okay. No, sorry. I meant to write Quigley. It'll be the dog. I'm just kind of uh, method. Uh -huh. So I mix those up sometimes. Well, that's... It's the opposite of method. You're with the actor's name. It, it doesn't matter. That'll be fine with the dog in the shot. Got it. Great. Okay. And um, here's another one. It says, German hair collector custodian wipes up dog pee and puts the pee rag in his mouth. Pee rag. Yeah. Classic shenanigans. Mm, is it? It feels a little um, fetishy for a Christian family comedy. You know what I mean? Or is it just right? Okay, yeah. I guess there's a fine line on those yeah, things. And, and some, some overlap. And yeah. like a good deal of overlap. That's fair. Okay, just one more issue. We're about to shoot Act 2, Scene 5. And at the top of that, it says, Gary Busey with a spike collar around his neck, kneeling inside a shit-smeared cage. Um, Did you mean Quigley again? I did not. No. Hey, guys, what you doing? Ah, look at that. Gary's already in costume. Look, I, I love that you're getting so into the role. Why are you talking about? <laughs> uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Don't, don't worry Is about it. Is that a ball in there? And action. What? Nothing, buddy. Nothing. It's, it's stuck in the grate. I, can, I, I can't get an angle on it with my mouth. It's so hard to get out. And we're back. When we left off, Megan was missing. And now the cops show up and they're... They're in a snit. They're like mad about the paperwork they have to fill out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missing uh, child. So at this moment, they're taking down the information and Quigley runs out the front door and he goes to meet up with Angel Sweeney for a little bit more advice for the end. And then we get, I, this is one of my favorite moments in the movie because it's clearly like outside of movie, something happened here. He, he meets up with Sweeney and Sweeney's like, let me get a hug, buddy. And we're watching Gary Busey, not the dog. 
So he's yeah. like, let me get a hug, Gary Busey. And Gary Busey gets so fucking mad. I'm pretty sure in real life. He's like, no, stop. Get off me. Get off. And he's just like, that's the whole scene. It's really weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Unconsensual hug. Fetish. Okay. <laughs> Check. Okay. Isn't he doing like the problem of evil here as well when he talks to Sweeney about like, why does God let this happen? It's like, look, Gary Busey, maybe God just wanted that kid to be dead in the woods. You know, mysterious <laughs> ways. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, the, the, the religious message does come through a few times and it's insane. There's one of them right there. And I got to assume the hug thing. So that's, it's really like the whole thing is the hug here. And the actor who plays Sweeney, I feel like either lost or won a bet with some other people on the set, right? Like if you were on the set with Gary Busey and you were like talking to the other actors, wouldn't you be like, I bet you can't, but you can't hug him for three <laughs> seconds. And then like, it'd be this like weird, terrifying thing of like, who could get a three second hug with Gary Busey? Oh, what if, here's a counter theory. What if the actor playing Sweeney is the one that Gary Busey had a fist fight about the real nature of, the real look of heaven with? And okay. this film is, this scene is filmed just after that, that the day after that fight. <laughs> so he's making him hug like, it out. You gotta fucking hug that out. That out. <laughs> what happened in real life, Mark? Uh, it it's gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> Great detective work. That's guaranteed yeah. what happened in yeah. real reality. No, I'm with be. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we get some more montage. Uh, Quigley hunting for his niece, just running around town, being, being really cute. And this is the montage song where it's like a cheap version of a 90s rap ballad. It's like, I've got three and a half on it, basically, is what we play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy who sings the chorus on, I got five on it, Michael Marshall. Not oh, me, actually like, named Michael Marshall? Actually named Michael Marshall? No shit. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you Google right. me, that's one of the, Google my name, that's one of the things that comes up is that guy. Yeah. It goes into <laughs> a little guy. bit of a ballad moment too. And it's <laughs> it it's kind of like a like a Disney love song duet for a moment, but like yeah. between two furries, because that's the tone. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting choice. I'll add a check mark. And you'll add I'll it? Add Great. It. Okay. I'll add it in. Also, this fucking dog runs over the same bridge like six times when it's running around. <laughs> they didn't even bother to show like another place. They were just like, yeah, we're going to sh- we're gonna film this culvert and this bridge and that's the only place that we're going to go with this dog. He's going to walk north <laughs> on the culvert and then south on the culvert, cross the bridge three times. That's the only B-roll we're shooting for this entire scene. North, south, south, north. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. So he's sniffing out her trail all over town and then he finds her Quigley the Pomeranian finds her but that is nothing because he's a dog and he just found her in the middle of the woods and that doesn't yeah. do anything and she's next to the river and I really wanted him as he finds her like just run up and push her in the river as like a callback <laughs> so somehow he found her but he somehow got the police to follow him a Pomeranian so the yeah. police are there too sort of and they bring her home yeah and the police are like, oh, that's quite a dog he got there. And it's like, yeah, I'm not sure the police should be, it should be admitting that they're less reliable than a Pomeranian. <laughs> or yeah. than Gary Busey for that matter. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, a dog did her job for us. Okay, have a nice day. Don't want to do paperwork. Yeah. yeah. Your, your kid's home now. We've got no further questions for you, <laughs> negligent parents. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are free to go. Yeah, well, but before we leave, we're going to shoot the dog because that's what cops and that's what we do. So. <laughs> All right. So from there, we cut to that night and Gary Busey, Quigley, the Pomeranian, is watching all of the family sleep. Like he's walking right into their rooms and like staring at them <laughs> sleeping. And then he's got a plan. The, the plan is he was just like making sure they were out cold so that he could go secretly play his brother yeah. Woodward's video game. Well, I, I do want to point out one quick thing. When the dog is walking around the house, it sounds like he has wooden Danish clogs on as he's walking. <laughs> like the sound designer did a terrible job of a like four pound dog walking around the house. It sounds like somebody like stomping around in okay. combat boots. It's the worst. I feel like the writer director put four foot Danish clogs on this Pomeranian. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey man, it's a little too far. It hurts the dog. We're taking those off, but they already had the sound and he forgot. To yeah, no, they out. already got it. Yeah, so yeah that's move definitely it. Sure, for sure. Also, this is still a stray dog. It is crazy that this family just let this dog just wander around the house. <laughs> in reality, that dog is shitting in every room and ripping yeah. every single thing apart. You've known this dog a day. Absolutely. Uh, and the dog, when it, when it goes to play the game, 
it puts the CD in the CD-ROM <laughs> and then it's a hundred percent a puppet that pushes the thing because it pushes it with his nose. You see the dog, like it's a total puppet <laughs> and it's not even a good puppet. It's like a, it's like a paper bag puppet they're using to push the thing in. It's the best. I really wanted the wide shot of an actual Pomeranian like operating a CD. <laughs> yes. player. That would have been the greatest moment of my life. That would have been fantastic. Or Gary Busey trying to operate a CD-ROM <laughs> either way. With his nose. Yeah, with his nose. And a, and a bunch of computer tech problems. He has to, he has to do CAPTCHA. He has to call tech support. <laughs> unplug the router. Just a clicking on pictures of yeah. fire hydrants and then pissing on them. <laughs> <laughs> you would think That's that the, the dog would just use its hands. It's a Palmeranian. Nice. <laughs> Palm, Palm. Forget it. Anyway, you were saying something. CAPTCHA. Yours, yours, yours is a better. <laughs> 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 So the dog is now playing Woodward's video game on the computer yeah. oh. to like see if his brother's any good. I don't know. But then Woodward, the brother, wakes up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And <laughs> the movie was like, this is a fucking tension moment. <laughs> I don't know why the movie thought that, but they put tension music. And then Woodward sure just did. like takes a shit, goes back to sleep. <laughs> sure did. Nothing happens. Yeah. No, nothing would have happened. He would have just seen a dog near a computer and that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. But they do a whole thing with that. I put in my notes, this movie really needs to pay off how this dog playing video games helps anyone other than Heath. Yeah. <laughs> 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 getting out of it. Actually, I'm going to add a... There's, yeah, yeah, there's a point. yeah. You're going to... The points for my thing, yeah, that counts. Yeah, no. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> the dog's playing the video game. Here's my question though. What does that do? He's not like recoding the video game to be better, mm -hmm. right? Because he's no. he's a dog? Or does the movie think he can do that as a dog? He's reviewing it for his business, for his friend. That's what he's, he's reviewing it right now. So he's just double checking it, making sure there's no bugs. And he's going to, he's going to bring it to his friend in the morning. So he knows. Okay. Yeah. It's just, a, it's just like a quick playthrough just to double check. He's making sure that this Christian rock skipping <laughs> video game is in fact <laughs> as amazing as he heard it was. And it is now. That's decided. And it yeah. is because it knows his name and it says his name perfectly. Yeah. It calls him Archie and it calls him Archie flawlessly. Him Archie. So this is an incredible yeah. piece of software because I don't <laughs> know is. how the dog's done that. <laughs> and, it, and let me tell you how incredible it is. I just want to I read a couple of the lines that this computer game shits out. In this, <laughs> this is nonsense. So it says, the first one is, welcome to episode four, let's play surprise party. So that's number one. Now, ev welcome to episode five, you've entered the surprise area, you decide if you can, is literally what it says. What? I don't know what that means. <laughs> and Quigley was like, I can, and just it was like, excited. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, so the screen, while this is happening, I froze it so I could read it. And it said, <laughs> the game decides basically they're deciding on what what color wagon you're going to give as a gift and the choices oh that's fucking exciting i didn't the see choices that wait, wait, wait. Are, they, are that a color selection thing yeah they say ask what color should we give the wagon as a gift and the choices on the screen are billy's favorite color you can make it to billy's party and you want to help me decorate also, question mark color. those what? are the, none of those things answer the question <laughs> Wait, so even the one that had the word color in it was just another question. <laughs> was a question. So it was like, yeah. pick a color. My answer is, what's Billy's favorite color? <laughs> uh, Very confusing. Amazing. Okay. Oh, the worst video game. <laughs> the worst PowerPoint video game I've ever played. <laughs> All right, well, Quigley uh, play tested it, and it's amazing, apparently. Then the next morning, Woodward wakes up, and he sees Quigley laying on the computer desk and Woodward immediately panics because he thinks right away, he's like, that means the dog reprogrammed my video game and it's ruined or something like that, <laughs> which makes none sense. Yeah, yeah. I was totally expecting like a shaggy voice like, Zoinks, man, that dog totally has my game. <laughs> <laughs> so this is when Quigley grabs the CD in his mouth and yeah. runs away because he, he's got a plan. And, yeah, and I hope I really want this plan to be like stealing his brother's IP. <laughs> I just wanted it to be like in touch property theft. Yeah, okay, it's Bill Gates great. all over again. So, uh, fuck you, Heaven. I'm going to be a billionaire dog. Eat my ass. <laughs> right. So the whole family now panics because I guess they all know that that one CD is the yes. only copy of the game, mm -hmm. and a dog has it. And now we get a chase scene in this movie. That chase is 
SUV versus tiny Pomeranian mm-hmm. <laughs> across yeah. town and quickly yeah. beats them to the office building across town. He jukes like six cars on their driveway. It's insane. <laughs> and I, I really want him to get to the office and then just drop the disc and it's just like dripping in drool. It's got teeth marks through it. It's <laughs> yeah. completely ruined. <laughs> it shatters, explodes everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, they pull, they, they chase him to the company that his brother, Quigley, Gary Busey owned and they chase him there and they get out and they're like, what is this place? Oh, it must be some sort of tech. And you're like, come on, man. Your brother is a fucking billionaire. You hate him and you are both in the same industry and you don't know <laughs> what he does. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You're drawing fucking, like you have a dartboard with his face and you know exactly where he is every second of the day if he's a billionaire. Yeah. They seem very, they're just like, Whoa, all these people are typing <laughs> on futuristic <laughs> screen devices. That's I don't exactly understand. It, he's man. a developer, allegedly. Okay. Yeah. How does he not recognize a computer development like company when he's a computer developer? He's a software developer. (laughs) (laughs) Made no sense. Whatever. Quigley brings the CD to Dexter in Dexter's office. And the dog then like cues Dexter and Sarah, who's also there, the the assistant, that like, I want you to play this CD and play this game. It's awesome. Somehow they get that. Yeah, Sarah asked, do you think the dog wants you to play the disc? It's like, why would anybody think that's what the dog <laughs> the wants? The dog was spinning. Oh, because he spin. That's he's spinning. Like a CD. Yeah. Come on, guys. All the dog wants is a belly rub and a treat and to be told he's a good boy. Those are the only things that he wants. In fairness, that's all Gary Busey wants as well. Um, as, as long as the treats cook in. That's all he's doing. That's all he's doing. <laughs> sure. Dog's looking around the room for a chair to push down the hall. It's just like <laughs> dying for it. <laughs> Okay, so well, they get the message. Dexter pops in the CD and he starts playing the game and he says, this is the best game I've ever played. <laughs> He's sheltered. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is this is a terrible looking game, even by 2003 standards. Like 2003, you could be playing The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker on the GameCube or Vice City on the PS2. Like those shit all over this game. But still, oh, like, oh, this is the greatest yeah. thing I've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're way better than this PowerPoint that he's playing that Skip Stone's on. Right. <laughs> so he's loving the game. And then Woodward bursts into the office and he's like, give me back my game. That's my intellectual property. What the fuck is this place? I don't understand anything. <laughs> he's so hostile, so man. Weird. Jesus Christ. And Dexter's Christ. like, your game, the dog brought it in. So yeah, but <laughs> did you think the dog coded it? <laughs> Is that, is that your working hypothesis? I love that Megan, the daughter, shows up here. She's running right behind dad. And she hears him yell at this very clearly, like, higher up in a video game development company. She's like, hey, dad, shut the fuck up. I think they want to pay yeah. you money for your game that you made. <laughs> and he's, like, arguing with her. He's like, look, I've never seen these people before in my life. And you're like, nobody says that unless they're, they're being surveilled, okay? <laughs> the only people who say that are, like, mob bosses. Right. That's how they start conversations. <laughs> Okay, also a tiny little moment here. Megan yells at dad, and then she's like, hey, this is a great company. You want them to like your game. They make all the games that you call trash, like that one. And she points over at the wall, (laughs) and there's a poster poster for, allegedly, one of the evil atheist games they make here. And it's called Mondo (laughs) Violetio. And uh, I put the picture of the poster... This in is here. the best shit I've ever seen. It uh, appears to be a, a pirate in a green unitard <laughs> superhero costume. He's punching through a brick wall, maybe? Yeah. Is that what's happening? Yeah, With maybe he's smashing behind. through some walls or yeah, something. Yeah, sure. He's escaping from a Michael Bay movie, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and Mondo Violetio. I looked it up. That's... <laughs> It's close to violence, but they didn't, it's a, it's closer to the word violet in Italian, I think. But <laughs> it, was clearly, it was clearly Busey trying to say something like world of violence in like a language he made up. And he was like, there, there you go. That'll be the, the poster. <laughs> so Dexter loves it. And without another word, he's just like, we will give you $500,000 right now for this rock skipping video game. <laughs> That was the opening <laughs> offer. No wonder this company was on its ass. If they're opening offer no to random kidding, people who right? walk in with dogs, right. it's half no wonder, a million. No wonder you're having fucking waves of layoffs in your <laughs> shitty run company. Are you kidding me? 
I wanted Quigley to negotiate here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He just starts spinning over and over, like, and they're like, okay, all right, 600,000, 700,000, 700,000, so cute. <laughs> he spins. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, Sweeney shows up, the guardian angel guy, and he's going to pretend that he owns Quigley the duck. So to be clear, the guardian angel from heaven in this moment is going to tell a lie and take a puppy away from these <laughs> kids. <laughs> Near the end of the movie. Also, he enters the room. So he walks in the room and everyone sees him walk in the room. Like everybody's like looks at him and the whole movie he's been invisible, but now he's visible, but everybody else thinks they're with him. So nobody <laughs> questions that he's there <laughs> and in the room just hanging out until there's like a lull in the conversation for three seconds. And then he's like, okay, by the way, that's my dog. I'm just want to let you know. Right. And his, his story, <laughs> the lie he tells if this was true, is also incredible. It's absolutely ins an insane choice because his, his his story is, I, I saw the poster about my missing dog. I went to your house. I saw you running out. So I chased you across town and into a half a million dollar <laughs> business meeting <laughs> in order to get my dog back. I didn't just be like, oh, they're out. I'll come back later. <laughs> 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 and they're all like, yep, everything that just happened makes all the sense. We're good, except for one character. And I think this was just like an improv. This actor who played Sarah was just like, absolutely not. And she's just like, hey, everybody, how the fuck is this the plot of the movie? What are you talking about? <laughs> and everybody's just like, shh, shh, shh. You're, you're fucking booger from Revenge of the Nerds. We're done with the scene. That's it. I, there's a point too where he turns to the kids or something because the, the dog gets handed back and he turns to the kids and he's like, we were so far into that dog. He says those words out loud. We were so far. And I'm going to put that as a fetish point. Actually. Okay. Now okay. Think about about it. It. Yeah. Uh, another yeah. question about a fetish point really quick here. So to end this, Dexter says to these kids, he's like, hey, hey, I know that this angel is literally taking away a puppy from you right now. That's insane. <laughs> we bought a whole bunch of puppies that look like Quigley because we really liked Quigley. You remember back in like the first third of the movie that we were in? We loved <laughs> the Quigley there. So we bought a shitload of puppies that look like Quigley. We'll give you one mm. if you want. <laughs> yeah, because like, oh yeah, we, we really liked Quigley, but mostly what we liked was his look, like his style. He just had, yeah. he had a real sort of vibe <laughs> about him. <laughs> Also, when you offer a kid a puppy like that, shouldn't you do it from a van? I don't think you do that from a boardroom. <laughs> okay, but who does that? You like a dog and then the dog's not there and then you buy too many similar looking dogs? <laughs> Who's so many, I That's insane. Right, but yeah. if you only buy one, what if that dog turns out to be an asshole? So you've got to, you've got to hedge your bets. Uh, it's a like, numbers so game. Yeah, It's a spread betting yeah. thing. Yeah, sure, sure. you got to yeah. hedge it. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> but the kids are like, cool, that's the same. Awesome. Now I'm happy again. <laughs> so that's almost the end. But, but first, to close it out, we got to have Gary Busey get zooped back to heaven because I guess he finished his tasks now. So now he's back at the pearly gates trying out his mulligan, like seeing if he if he made it this time. Yeah. Oh, God. And these angels are like bickering at him, too. They're such shitty. They're like, and then you did this wrong. And then you did this wrong. You're like, Jesus, just fucking make me a dog forever, please. <laughs> just do whatever you got to do. Right. Because like they talk about, oh, you pissed on that briefcase. And I really wanted them to send him to hell for pissing on that briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it, it turns out pissing in briefcases was always meant to be a mortal sin. And we, we actually meant to put it on the tablet, but then Moses, he just insisted on adding to, like, we had to keep the Sabbath holy. You know, the guy oh. just really loved a weekend, what can I say? And so we, we didn't have space for the briefcase thing on the tablet in the end. But yeah, off, off you go to hell, off you go to hell. You peed after sundown on Friday, so <laughs> you the puppy, you go to hell, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the angels kind of roast him a little bit. Like, they were building the tension, and then they're like, ah, it's like, no, 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 it's it a whole trick. And for a second, I think... Did they not like double trick him and be like, no, 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 the, there was no mulligan. You go to hell now. We just wanted to like see you as a dog down there for a while. <laughs> see you flounder for a couple days. Yeah, as a prequel. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he lands on a couch in hell that video game's on and that's all there is. <laughs> right in the cum stain. Yeah, fuck. This one doesn't even have a sheet on it. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> but then Gary Busey says, I can't leave it like that. You got to give me one more chance. You got to let me go back. What was he trying to reconcile here 
still at this point. I don't yeah, know. Leave everything like it is. Everything is literally fine. The company's better. His brother's happier. Yeah. His brother's not destitute. The, the Dexter and Sarah together. This is perfect right now yeah. without him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. He just wanted to have a whisper fight with God for a minute. That's <laughs> okay. all that wanted to happen. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like if It's a Wonderful Life ended and it was like, Actually, if you did kill yourself, actually, everyone would be better off. Yeah, no, everyone, everyone, <laughs> it turns out everyone's really yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah. You're you right. Dying, we're bored. You're yeah. right. Good. You're right. Good That's job. exactly what they're going for. Take one for the team. Yeah. Weird. And then, yeah, we, it gets even worse. God, for no reason, there's no reason. God talks here. And God's like, yeah, just for the record, I do not care about good deeds. That doesn't mean <laughs> shit. It's all about you saying my name a lot and worshiping yeah. me. That's all that yep. matters. Faith. Yep. That's it. Yep. As he in the scene. Yeah. Yeah. And then he wakes up in a bed. Right. Yeah. And then he wakes up in a hospital <laughs> bed and the whole thing was a dream sort of or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was fine from that uh, crash. They say like, oh, you, you don't have any broken bones. You know, you don't even have the kind of superficial injuries that would have required a makeup department. So this is all <laughs> fine for us. Why are you in a hospital bed then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if he was fine, why did he even go to the hospital? Like if you're <laughs> fine in an accident, they're like, well, we got to take you to the hospital. No, they just like, cool, you're fine. All right, go ahead. Oh, no, this- yeah, especially in America where you got to pay for that sure, shit. No, this I mean, you just go to hospital and get a checkup. But yeah, you yeah. guys don't do that. That'll ruin it. <laughs> okay, no, I think this was just what Gary Busey did that day and they were like okay he's in a hospital bed sure <laughs> that kind of fits yeah yeah but there's no way Gary Busey doesn't have any broken bones at any given time he's always got at least one from something <laughs> surely <laughs> right. so now I guess Gary Busey has turned a corner he's a good person he learned his lesson in the dream or whatever and he wants to destroy his interactive CD-ROM because that has like evil profit ideas on it and that's that's no good so he's going to end the movie as like uh, anti-capitalist. Yeah. Like maybe he like redeemed himself, I guess yeah. the redemption arc. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. That's sure. sort of what they go for here. So they wheel him out of the hospital for, for no reason. And yeah, he's, he's perfectly he's fine. fine. Yeah. And then they remind him to take his medication outside. You're like, for what? He yeah. didn't have anything wrong with that him. Yeah, like, that's nothing to do with the crash. <laughs> that is, again, just Gary Busey. Okay. Take the meds, Gary. That was like his, his actual nurse that follows him around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was actually a fun little moment, too. The, whoever played the discharge nurse there whispered into his ear to take his medicine but she got her face like a little too close to Gary Busey's ear when he wasn't ready. And in real life, it scared the fuck out of him and he's furious and he jumps out of the chair and he's all mad. It was a fun little uh, moment. But yeah, Dexter's there to pick him up and he announces to Dexter, he's like, the company's Christian now and pets are allowed at work because I like dogs now. Work. Yeah, and if anything, I want yeah. dogs to shit everywhere all the time. Yeah. More <laughs> shit, please. Yeah. <laughs> And he also says like, okay, I'm going to seize the means of production from myself. Myself. <laughs> yep. Uh, we're going to do employee ownership thing. I'm going to so take everybody... it out of my back yeah. pocket and put it in my front yeah, pocket. Yeah, right. That's what I'm going to say. American yeah. Christian God is going to be totally on board with that one. The American Christian yeah. God is going to love him for the profit sharing of this company. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> also, the stockholders that he's talking about are literally going to remove him as the fucking president <laughs> in like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have safeguards for communists here. That's not happening. But yeah, he does the like everybody shares equally thing as an announcement. And then he's like, also, Dexter, you're my 50-50 partner. Except that's <laughs> nothing now. <laughs> so I enjoyed that. And then it closes out. They go to see Woodward to see how he's doing. And Gary Busey just pulls up at Woodward's house. And he's like, hey, I want to be a part of your life now. <laughs> and Woodward's wife is like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seller percent is so angry with Gary Busey. It's the best. It was fun. Oh, and this is where Gary Busey says, I've come out of a never ending nightmare. It's like, well, definitionally, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> definitionally, you can't possibly do that. Right. And then they have a, like, like they ask him and they have a why, why not fight for a minute where he's like, why do you want to do this? He's like, well, why wouldn't I want to do this? They're like, but why? But why not? It's crazy. <laughs> and in fairness, Gary Busey is, he does do a very good job at delivering the whole, I've come here to ask for forgiveness for my behavior speech. But that's mostly because he's done a lot of these. Like this is his <laughs> <Right>. weekly thing. <laughs> also, he got him a puppy. So yep. Like the the wife yells at Gary Busey and then, oh, she totally and then Wilbur's like, hey, uh, hun, maybe we let my billionaire brother be in our lives. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of an idiot. I really make, I make bad games. And then Gary Busey's mm. like, cool, I'm in your life. I got you a puppy. So now they have two puppies that look like Quigley, I guess. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> the end. 
Oh, but no, it's not the end. There is a long, I watched the whole thing, highlight reel of all the actors playing with the different Pomeranians that were on the set for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Did you hear the song about Quigley then? Because it was like some sort of like Quigley themed song about how great Quigley the dog was. Fantastic. It's yeah, it's great. <laughs> Absolutely great. It was, it was really fun watching the end. <laughs> So, <laughs> all, right, all right, final tally, final tally. Yeah, final verdict. Final tally. We What's for for family fun movie, I have uh 18, but for fetish, I have 5 10 15 20 20 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 37. <laughs> so 37 beats 18, I think. Okay. By a lot. So more than double. Definitely a fetish movie. I just wanted to let people know. Okay, more final than two, thir- two more than 2 to 1 ratio <laughs> fetish <laughs> to Christian family comedy, but definitely both. That's it. Because they That's cross it. over a lot. All right. Yeah. With that, we're going to bring episode 429 to a merciful close. Cecil, Marsh, thank you so much for being on. Always a pleasure. Oh, this is so much fun. I love watching you squee over a little dog. It's been, like, it's been my <laughs> pleasure, buddy. Anything going on? For example, Season Liberally got something coming up or Marsh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out videos every week for Season Liberally. So you can check that out on season at Season Liberally on YouTube. You just search for that and you'll find me and my cooking channel. All right. What about maybe like a little Be Reasonable, something like that? I haven't done a Be Reasonable for a little bit. I need to find some new people to talk to. So I'm going to be working on that. But uh, you can hear me every two weeks on Skeptics with a K, the podcast Woo-hoo. I've been doing since like 2009. And uh, yeah, we did some really good stuff there. And also go to the Skeptic magazine. So Skeptic uk uh, we put up original skeptical journalism several times a week just really interesting stuff that i uh, find from people all over the skeptic community so yeah check that out journalism on the internet that is actually good for the world it's rare definitely a good source <laughs> for you and of course a big thanks to our patreon donors for all the generosity if you'd like to help support the show you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Cecil and Marsh, I'm Heath. Promising to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. Gary's company finally coded a video game for dogs, and he needed three joysticks to shit on a rug. <laughs> After pledging to share the company's profits equally, Gary's character went to hell for being a goddamn communist. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Busey went on to star in Gary Busey Pet Judge for real, Whoa. in real reality, in which he is the judge of a pet court. What the fuck up? I watched it. It's fucking amazing. Oh. Okay, I'm putting another finish. <laughs> <laughs>Seriously, the first episode, I actually watched a little bit. The first episode, it's about like the two owners of a cat, a couple who then split up and the cat passed away and they have a dispute over one guy. He wants to have a Viking funeral for the cat. (laughs) His his ex-girlfriend wants to not burn the cat in a pyre. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so Gary Busey has to rule on that. They make a pun at the beginning. One of them's like, yeah. So her name is Mousy Tongue. And <laughs> the, the, Gary Busey does not get it, but he's already furious because he's like, is that a fucking pun? I don't get it. And he's like yelling at him. And they're like, no, it was just, it, it's just a, little, a little communist joke. And he's like, are you fucking communists? And they're like, no, no. I feel like you're yelling at both of us. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I'm going to 100% put that on my watch list. That sounds now. amazing. Thank you. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. When you're the boss, you're always working, problem solving, planning, innovating. You don't have time to stop and think about insurance. At Frankenmuth Insurance, our local independent agents are your true partner working with you to minimize risk with custom insurance solutions and ongoing guidance so you can move forward with confidence. Frankenmuth Insurance. Let's have a frank conversation. Start at FMINS.com.